Coming up on the road to WAC Vegas, the Big Maple comes up big against the top team in the WAC. The Aggies and the Lopes get ready for round two. On the women's side, California Baptist gets their shot at redemption. We speak with Lancer head coach Jared Olson. Plus, it's your final chance to win tickets to the WAC basketball tournament. Show us your sickest trick shots for a chance to win. That's all ahead on the road to WAC Vegas. Welcome to the Road to WAC Vegas. I'm Kendra Sheehan. Upset alert in the state of Utah this weekend. We start with Utah Valley stunning WAC leader New Mexico State in our featured game of the week. The Wolverines get ahead early. Fardaz Amac from downtown. The Big Maple showing he can hit shots from anywhere. Recording his NCAA leading 21st double-double of the season. NM State isn't giving up just yet. In the second half, down by eight, Johnny McCants catches the backwards pass and somehow gets the bucket to drop. But Blaze Neal, despite the 6'10 defender in his face, drains the triple. UVU holds on for the 72-68 win over NM State. The Wolverines improved to 7-5 in the conference. Let's go back to Thursday night. The Aggies at Dixie State. Teddy Allen with the pull-up J to keep NM State in the lead. Teddy Buckets finishes his fourth straight game with 20 points or more. New Mexico State defeats Dixie State 77-69. Our featured game of the week will send the Aggies to a havoc-filled GCU arena. 10-2 NM State will take on the 8-4 Lopes. Game tips off Saturday at 6 p.m. Mountain Time on ESPN+. It was an up and down week for Grand Canyon visiting the state of Utah. On Thursday night, visiting Utah Valley, after trailing by two at the half, Holland Woods II, or the Great Boudini, as his Twitter handle says, hits the shot from deep during a 23-6 run, giving GCU control of the game and earning them the 79-69 win over UVU. In a Saturday night showdown at Dixie State, Grand Canyon's Sean Miller Moore, my goodness, off the dead ball, the two hand slam to give the Lopes the three point lead in the second half. This game would go down to the wire. Hunter Schofield gets the basket and the foul to tie the game up at 60. The 75% free throw shooter gets the extra point, and the Trailblazers are up by one. Grand Canyon would try to hit the game winner step back three, but it's no good. Dixie State upsets GCU 61 to 60. The Trailblazers are now five and seven in the WAC. Seattle U is back on track this week, going 2-0 at home with wins over UTRGV and Lamar. The Red Hawks have three games coming up this week, including a road contest at the Vaqueros on Wednesday, followed by a home game against California Baptist on Saturday. In a rescheduled game, SU will have another shot at NM State on Monday in what could be a battle for the top spot in the WAC. Coming up next, California Baptist's women's team will get a rematch for second place in the conference standings when they head to Grand Canyon. We sit down with Lancer's head coach, Jared Olson, to break down this week's game plan. We'll be back in just a moment. Fans, welcome back to WAC Vegas. As we celebrate more than a decade of madness at the Orleans Arena, the 2022 Hercules Tires WAC Basketball Tournament, March 9th through the 12th. In this year, there are even more games to watch with 20 teams in Las Vegas. For ticket information, go to WACSports.com. Welcome back to the Road to Act Vegas. I'm Kendra Sheehan, California Baptist women's basketball head coach Jared Olson joins us. Lancers are 18 and five overall, nine and three in the WAC. And coach, on Thursday, you've got a pretty important matchup: two seed playing the three seed. Last time out, it was a nine point loss to Grand Canyon. What adjustments are you looking to make to come out with the win this week? Obviously, we want to play a little bit better. Um, I think Grand Canyon played really well against us last time, and um, you know, we're, we're going to try to do a couple things differently just to give ourselves a better chance, but, you know, we know they're a really good team. They're tough at home. They've played a ton of home games this year. Um, so we'll work really hard this week to kind of give ourselves the best chance to win. We'll show up on Thursday and, and give it a pretty good run. 
looking at the WAC tournament this year and the seeding, how important is it to have that top two seeding so that you ultimately only have the potential to play two games? Yeah, I, I just, I mean, I, I don't know if I just was sleeping on that or what, but I just kind of like realized that a couple of weeks ago. And um, I think obviously getting second is better than third, just from the standpoint, you play one less game, but there's, I think there's arguments to be made on both sides. You know, I think if you're, you know, get a little momentum going in that conference tournament, it might work out better than having the buys anyway. Um, but I, we definitely want to play for that. I think that'd be our goal right now is to finish second and, and have the buys. So we can go straight to the semis, give ourselves, you know, the best chance to win. Um, but I think the, the thing we're really kind of focused on right now is just playing better basketball. Uh, we've been pretty inconsistent most of the year. And um, this past weekend, we put together two good games in a row, which is pretty encouraging. So um, we're kind of looking just to kind of build on that. And hopefully no matter what seed we are going into that tournament, we're playing our best basketball. With just a month out from WAC Vegas, how do you play consistent basketball? How do you get the team to play all four quarters like you need them to play? Yeah. I mean, I think February is a pretty tough month. I mean, I see that all across the country at, you know, men's basketball, women's basketball, um, all over. Like, it's just the month of inconsistency for the most part. I mean, everybody can kind of, you know, see the, the light at the end there with the conference tournament. But at the same time, you're starting to kind of feel a little bit of that grind of, of the season. Um, and I think it's just going to be a real test of our resiliency and just our mental toughness to kind of like be able to kind of push through and, and be strong enough to, you know, show up every day to, to put the, the right effort in and have the, the right attitude. You know, just having a great attitude every day just makes a big difference. And I think if we can stay positive and, and do the work, we'll be in good shape. On the positives, California Baptist sweeps our Ticket Smarter Player of the Week awards, Ani Oleda and Trinity San Antonio. Ani, I know we talked about her a lot at the beginning, but how much improvement and continued growth have you seen from her this season? I mean, Ani, I mean, she's a, you know, a really, really tough woman, um, special person. Um, my daughter was telling me yesterday how that Ani is her basketball role model. Uh, oh. My daughter is um, nine years old. So, I mean, she's, Ani is a great person to look up to. I was, I mean, when, when Felicity said that, it made me feel really proud that we're, she's at least looking to the right people for some guidance. Um, Ani is, you know, she, she drives the bus for us and, you know, she's had some ups and ups and downs this year, but she kind of fights through. Uh, I think that's my favorite thing about her is she just doesn't quit. Um, and she, she is really stubborn and very feisty and, and she's going to just, go out there and just do everything she can to make sure she gets the job done. And i um, definitely really glad she's on our team and yeah, looking forward to having her just finish the year really well. Yeah, definitely glad she's back for another year. Another player, Trini San Antonio, a freshman who's been a spark off the bench for your, your guys numerous times. How much have you seen her kind of come into her own this season? Yeah, Trinity has grown a lot throughout the year. I mean, she's a super explosive and exciting player and, you know, as with most freshmen, there's a learning curve and, you know, she makes, you know, she's made some, some mistakes and, but that's pretty normal. Uh, and I think again, kind of like how I was describing on just Trinity has a great resiliency and she doesn't get too down on herself, you know, when, when, when she does make a mistake or, you know, it, I think she also really accepts coaching really well, you know, because as a freshman, she recognizes that she does have a lot of room to grow. Um, and she is receptive to a lot of criticism and, and just suggestion that a lot of players are, are not willing to take. And I think that that has really made her growth, you know, go a little bit faster. And I think it's also going to like be a great, a great thing for her going forward because she, it'll just give her more potential to grow. You know, when everybody needs, everybody needs help. It's so hard to be successful on your own. And when you're willing to accept coaching and to, you know, kind of like listen to criticism and, and be willing to kind of make adjustments with that and do the work to change those things, to improve yourself. I think that just says a lot about her and her character and, and what her future could be. When mentioning specific players, I can't not mention Caitlin Harper leads your team over 18 points a contest. How has, she was obviously a big part of last year's team as well, but how has she continued to improve this season and add impact this year? Yeah. Caitlin is pretty awesome. I mean, she is the best teammate we have. Um, she's super easy to coach, uh, you know, and I, I, she's, 
she can just do so many different things for us. And we ask her to do a lot of different things. Um, you know, the other day, I mean, she didn't play as much in the second half because um, Brittany Thomas was having a really good half. And, and you don't hear one one thing out of Caitlin about complaining. She's the first one off the bench cheering for Brittany. And uh, I just think that she is, is just a, a great person and a great teammate. And she's really kind of what we want all of our, you know, why we get into coaching because she just makes your job so much easier because she's willing to do the work um, and she makes it easy for you. And I'm just so thankful that she's on our team. Was there a particular game or moment that stood out to you this season that could be a turning point or something that you'll remember down the line as you go to WAC Vegas and you think, okay, remember this time guys, like we can pick it up and we can, you know, change the momentum of this game. Yeah. I, I mean, I honestly am not sure we've quite hit that point yet. It might've been at UTRGV or Lamar last weekend. Um, I think, I think we'll know after this week, if those were the turning points or not, we've had a few that kind of like, we were kind of hopeful it was a turning point for us, but it, it just didn't really hit. Um, but I definitely know we have it in us. And so at some point here, we're going to hit that point and, and then we're going to get things moving. It had been a while since you had suffered a regular season conference loss. How have you utilized those losses and learned from them so that you can build off of them? What have you gained from, you know, those losses? Well, you can definitely learn a lot more from losing than you can winning, right? It definitely makes you reflect on it in different ways. Um, and I think that we've, you know, we needed some adversity on the season. You know, we didn't go into it expecting to win every single game again. I think that was, you know, a little unusual. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're disappointed when we lose and, you know, we're trying to improve, you know, each loss kind of like magnifies and at least shines some light on some things you need to do a little bit better. Uh, and I think we've done a pretty good job of kind of addressing some of those things, but, you know, we, we definitely haven't quite hit the same rhythm, you know, in the same flow, um, as we had last year. But like I said, I think this past weekend was a pretty good turning point on that. And, um, you know, like I said, hopefully this week we'll, we'll, that'll be proven true. Um, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. When I spoke to you at preview days, you had talked about a focus of this team being, the mindset, not getting too high, not getting too low. How has the mentality of this team been throughout this season? Well, we could definitely use a little work on that at times, uh, myself included. Um, you know, and I, I think that we're still working through some of that. Um, but I do think that there have been, I mean, especially early in the year, we played a lot of close games. And I think that was really helpful to us to just to kind of like be a little bit more even. Um, I definitely think that there's been times in the, once we got into the whack that, you know, we were probably a little too high or a little too low at moments. Um, but I mean, we, I think, I think we're just getting ready to play our best basketball. And I think that the, the more steady we can be, the more consistent we can be, the better chance we'll have of getting to that point where we're, we're playing our best at the right time. Yeah. Perfect time to start playing your best basketball. Where do you think this team needs to make the most improvement this month so that you go into that March tournament ready to go? I think it's just more of a, and we, we've definitely shown flashes of being able to do, you know, different little phases of the game. There's been games where our offense has really clicked. There's been some games defensively where we've been really good. Um, but I think it's just more a matter of just kind of putting it all together, um, kind of finding some of that joy in the game, you know, where that chemistry, that camaraderie, uh, I think, I think we're headed in the right direction. And, and like I said, I think the more that ball moves, um, the more we, we, you know, just give a great effort defensively. All those little things kind of add up. I don't think it's one specific area. I think it's just more of just kind of doing the work uh, and getting ready for the next game. And you'll have three home games, a trip to Chicago, and then back home before WAC Vegas. How big is it for you to play in your home, in your home <laughs> gym and get some big wins and build that momentum before yeah. WAC Vegas? I mean, we, if we have played way more road games than I think any other team in the league. I think it's, I think that's a very wide margin. Um, I think we have maybe like the second or third fewest home wins on the season in the WAC, even though we have like 18 wins on the year. Um, so anytime we get a chance to play at home, I think we're definitely just very appreciative, very thankful. Um, just thankful that we're not driving to the airport on a bus. Thankful we can eat the food we want to eat instead of having to order out. Thankful we can sleep in our own beds. So, um, and we have a great group of a great support, you know, from, from fans and stuff here, which, you know, I know they enjoy watching us play and, you know, hopefully 
we'll be able to finish the season really strong for them and, uh, and give them some good games to watch. Lastly, is there anyone that you can think of on the team that has jumped out to you that has made the biggest stride or has showed up in a moment that your team needed the most? I mean, you mentioned it earlier, Trinity, um, you know, she's been a, just a, a just awesome to coach. You're just somebody, you know, having a freshman that's new, just a different dynamic to a team that had a lot of returners. Um, that's been pretty fun. Um, you know, and, and she, like I said, she just, she just really does the work. She's exciting to watch super athletic, um, and just, just a great human being to be around too. So, um, yeah, it's been really nice having her. And uh, like I said, I'm really looking forward to seeing where she can take this thing. All right, coach. Well, wish you the best of luck this Thursday as you take on Grand Canyon and then the rest of the season. We'll look forward to seeing you in WAC Vegas. And we got more women's basketball coming up after the break. to Wack Vegas. California Baptist swept the Ticket Smarter Player of the Week awards after going 2-0 on the road. Ana Oleta earns her second Player of the Week honor this season after posting 18 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 assists in CBU's 71-56 win over Lamar. The grad guard shot 60% from the floor this week. Trinity San Antonio took home her second Freshman of the Week award after providing double-digit scoring for the Lancers off the bench in both games. San Antonio notched 12 points, two assists in 22 minutes of play in the 94-78 win over UTRGV. In our featured Game of the Week, it's a rematch for sole possession of second place. The top two teams heading into WAC Vegas earn buys until the semifinals. California Baptist heads to Grand Canyon to try and avenge a nine-point loss to the Lopes earlier this season. Game tips off Thursday at 6 p.m. Mountain Time on ESPN+. In our WAC featured game of the week, Utah Valley at Grand Canyon. Wolverines up by four just before the half. Madison Grange, with the range, knocks down the triple. Grand Canyon's got a long-distance shooter of their own. Amara Graham practically from the logo sinks the tray to bring the Lopes within five. Josie Williams is tough on the glass, grabs the offensive board and the basket. Williams notched another double-double, 11 points, 11 rebounds. UVU gets a big road dub, 58-50 over GCU. The Wolverines are now 6-6 six six in WAC play. Utah Valley heads home this week to host Tarleton on Wednesday at 6 p.m., followed by Dixie State Saturday at 2 p.m., Mountain Time on ESPN+. Stephen F. Austin makes it through another week unscathed as the Lady Jacks improve to 12-0 in the WAC. First hosting Chicago State, Stephanie Vischer with the spin move, then the perfect timing for the shot. SFA cruises to its 36th consecutive home win, 84-55 over CSU. On the road in Las Cruces on Monday, Zaya Nugent in the final minute of play drives to the hoop to score a career high 31 points with seven rebounds and two steals in the 69-55 win over New Mexico State. Up next, SFA will visit the Windy City to play Chicago State Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time before hosting Lamar on Saturday at 2 p.m. Central Time on ESPN+. For this week's contest, in honor of the Super Bowl, we asked you all to share your favorite game day snack for a chance to win tickets to WAC Vegas. Congratulations to the Certified Axemen for making our mouths water picking barbecue brisket pork rind nachos. This week, it's your final chance to win tickets to our basketball tournament. We saved the best for last. Show us your craziest, most entertaining trick shots for your chance to win. Three, we're seriously three weeks out from WAC Vegas at the Orleans Arena. It's going to be crazy. We want to see all those trick shots for your chance to be in the madness with us. I'll see you right back here next week.